So now we're going to look at getting your airway equipment ready for an intubation. We're going to use the airway trolley to do that. It's really important to make sure that you have the intubating checklist here to make sure that your team is as organized as you can be. And it's really helpful for making sure you've got the right equipment. So the first thing you'll require is a self-inflating bag with maximal oxygen flow connected to your bed space. This is usually hanging by your bed space. And it's really important to have a mask attached for your patient and also make sure that you've got capnography here so you can see a CO2 trace um, during the process of intubation. The next thing you require is some oropharyngeal airways and these come in different sizes and shapes, <laughs> sizes and colours um, and these need to be matched to your patient so make sure you size and use the correct size that's appropriate for your patient. In the next drawer you'll find an eye gel or an LMA. A laryngeal mask airway, and this one's called an eye gel, is a really important rescue measure for getting oxygen into your patient if you can't pass an ET tube down. The next thing you require is two, two sizes of ET tubes. The standard size we use for a normal size adult male is an 8. We always so keep a size down, so we've got an 8 and a 7 here. It's really important to make sure that you check the cuffs, that the cuffs are working and there's no tears in them, so that you don't have any problems later on when you're intubating your patient. To pass this, we'll have a laryngoscope, and we'll need two, size, two different types of laryngoscopes here. So we've got one laryngoscope here, which is called a videoscope, um, and that's got a blade attached as well. And we'll need a secondary laryngoscope as well. So this is our secondary laryngoscope. This has not got a video, so we call this a direct laryngoscope. The next thing we'll require is a bougie, and these are hanging by the side of your trolley here. Suction, which we will find around the bed. Your stethoscope, which should be hanging here, so you can listen to the right and the left side of the lungs to make sure you've got air entry on both sides. The final thing in your drawers will be the Kaiko kit. And this is if you cannot intubate and cannot give oxygen to your patient, and they're um, essentially dying without any oxygen going in, this is a way for you to get emergency oxygen in through the front of the neck, um, if you have to. The final things you require is your ventilator setup and you need your monitoring all set up, and then we'll look at the bed space. So now we're at the bed space, we're going to make sure we've got all the equipment ready to go. So we're making sure we've got our monitoring ready, so we've got our pulse oximetry, our end tidal CO2, a non-invasive cycling regularly every one to two minutes, as well as an arteri or an arterial trace, make sure we've got our ECG as well. We've got our self-inflating bag, and again that's connected up to high flow oxygen, and making sure we've got our CO2 connected. We've got our oropharyngeal airway here, we've got our LMA and eye gel, um, and we've got our two types of laryngoscopes, and the light's working on that one, and the camera's working on this one, we've got battery. We've already checked our tubes, we've got our bougie, and it's really helpful if we get this position in the correct way to hand it over. Uh, we've got our suction functioning, and the suction needs to be under the bed. Uh, somebody's got a stethoscope around in the room, or it's here. Um, and we've got our um, Kaiko kit ready to go. We've also made sure we've got our ventilator set up, and then we're good to start. So just a few useful things to recap. Um, it's useful to make sure that you're handing a bougie the right way. Um, this end with the tip, the hook at the end, and the two holes in the side, that should go into the patient, and the one with the hole at the end, that should stay up in the air. So it's just useful if you have it lying that way, so you hand it over to the airway operator correctly. The same goes with the ET tube, make sure that it's lined the correct way so when you hand over to the operator, they can just put it in the patient. Make sure you've got your ties ready, so these ties should be around your patient and just make sure your tube can be secured, because after you've gone through all this effort, you don't want it falling out. You've got your suction ready and this should be switched on, and it should be underneath the head of the bed, um, just in case if there's any vomit, we can suction that up really quickly and rapidly. The final thing that's quite difficult is making sure that this capnography is where it needs to be. At the start of your intubation, this should be on the face mask, connected, and up the tube is in, you take the face mask off, and the capnography just should stay attached to your self-inflating bag. So at that precise moment, you can make sure that you've got your tube in the right place, you've got CO2, and then you can go over to change your ventilator.